opportunity. It seems the news has primarily been good as of late uh, as it relates to uh, to Florida State. And uh, today uh, we're going to continue uh, with the theme and, and, and follow up on that a little bit as uh, the opportunity to talk to the new head baseball coach, Link Jarrett has been presented, and we will do so this afternoon. What do you think, 1.30? I think 1.30, Link Jarrett is due uh, to join us, or is scheduled to join us, I should say. And um, I look forward to, to speaking with him um, and, and, and hearing his thoughts. Obviously, it's been a probably a bit of a whirlwind for him. Uh, I thought I, I thought he hit the right notes uh, in the press conference. I, I, was, I said this yesterday, I think it was, on Headlines with you, Tom, and, and, and Ira. I kind of welcomed and was ready to welcome a more um, sort of succinct and uh, direct and thoughtful and intense sort of uh, press conference. Most of the most of the coach announcement press conferences are are light and fluffy, uh, and understandably, you know, it's a good time. Most people are excited. They're uh, the the person himself or or herself is in a position to be in a good mood. They just got a job as a head coach at a, at a major university. And then usually the university is obviously putting on a brave face. Now they probably didn't like that. They had to hire somebody, but uh, once they go through the process, they're happy to have it resolved. One would presume, even if they find out later on, they got it wrong, that in that moment, they certainly think, all right, we got our guy, we got our gal, whatever it might be. So that's why it's light and airy and, and, and nobody's asking hard hitting questions at a news at a press conference to announce a new coach. So it's usually sort of just sort of a, a lighthearted. But I, I think for him, you know, he's so locked in. You could see it. He's still locked in on that whole, this whole thing. I mean, and when, and I, I'm, I'm going to ask him this, but the, the idea of reaching and maybe not the pinnacle. I mean, I have no idea. Does he someday want to be the coach of the, like, like Kevin Nash, uh, cash, Kevin Nash. Listen to me. I'm thinking of wrestling. <laughs> Join the wolf pack, brother. <laughs> Does he want to be you know, the coach of the, the Rays? Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't know if he has aspirations to, to coach in the major leagues or not, but uh, I do know that he grew up here and, and, and his family's here. And I know, obviously I watched him play here. Um, and, 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 you know, he did interview for this job and wanted this job. So I know that this was a big deal. He wanted this job and then to get it, uh, to, to get it, it's, uh, it's gotta be a lot. It's gotta be a lot. You know, I mean, uh, you're always chasing something and then all of a sudden you, you've got this thing. I think you're right about the extended you know, existence of being locked in because it can use an analogy in our own jobs and anybody out there, if you're in a big meeting or presentation mm -hmm. and somebody catches you or for us a show right after the brain is well, firing hard, yeah. at, at real speed. So like there's a window, but if you get me in the first five minutes after the show, I'm operating at peak 15 minutes after no way. He's yeah. Mush brain as I call it. <laughs> yeah. He's still on that first 15 minute or five minute window after his season. You can tell there there was an air of you're damn right. I'm the head coach at Florida state to the whole proceeding, especially that was the question that I asked leading off. Could you envision yourself being the head coach? He's saying yes. And you know, and, and that's yeah. a good attitude because you don't want somebody who's afraid of oh, the expectation. No, no, the you opposite. want somebody who embraces it and says, yeah, yeah I'm going to be the one to take us to where we haven't gone yet. Love it. I love that about him. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it, that's true of any job, right? Especially a job in which you have to to present or speak and, and, and work with and communicate with people on a regular basis. You're right. You, you have that moment. There's the right when we get off the air. So to use our business as an example, when I, I, I tell this all the time and I'm sure you had to do the same thing with your wife, Jamie. I remember, um, you know, when I was dating my wife, my now wife, um, it, you know, the, the first probably month we were together, she, she didn't care about sports. I mean, she does, she doesn't, she's a Florida state grad. So she wants Florida state to do well, but she doesn't care like we care. <laughs> and so she loves the lightning. She watches that and she likes the Red Sox. So she watches baseball, but if she doesn't see a sport for weeks on end, it doesn't bother her. But every day I talk about it and I, and, and she would, she was disinterested, but she didn't understand that when I came home, I couldn't, I, I can't engage. It's, right, it, it right. takes a, a little while. I need a little cool off period, you know, a little downtime. And uh, I finally did. I had to say, listen, it's never going to be anything against you. But when I walk through the door, let's chatty chatty. Let's do a little less of the chatty chat. <laughs> let's, <do this. laughs> let's just do the, hey, good to see you. Ah, I'll talk to you in a bit. Just need some time. Just need a little bit of time to come down. And it's it's weird, right? 
but you are, you get locked in, you get locked in. And I think he's still, and we'll, it'll be, he'll be on here at one 30. He'll be here in 20 minutes. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I wonder if he's that because he's going to be busy. You know, you got to get your staff together now. And, and obviously we're talking about you. Th this is that window where it all starts to happen. You know, you don't get a chance to do that over. So, so here you go. Um, and, and I think uh, it's, you know, it's exciting. Uh, he's, you, you, your brain is flying because you have so many things you want to do and you want to get everything off on the right foot. I mean, we know that just from the different jobs we've worked at together. Like you want to get off on the right foot and there's only one chance to do that, right? Here you go. What are we doing today? That's going to make us better down the line. What are we doing today? That makes us better tomorrow. What are we doing today? That makes us better in a month, a year, five years. All right. Can I get this guy in here? Can I get this guy in here? All right. Do it. What about this recruit? Is this kid staying? You know, who do I need to talk to? This kid's, he's not so sure. You know, I, I got to talk to him. I got to think about this guy that I could bring in. There's all of that. And then, of course, you have the behind the scenes stuff with the stadium and operations and the athletic department. And then there's getting your ducks in a row where you're figuring out scholarships and money, the whole deal. And who holds it and who do I need to hold their hand? To say, who am I supposed to play it? golf with tomorrow? Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All of that is all of that is there. And it's um, it's a fascinating time, but I I would think, and uh, that is going to be my guess, that man, it's exciting. It's what you've worked so hard for. I, I've gotten I joke all the time on the show now. You know, the other night, the NBA draft. Did you watch any of the NBA draft? I don't suppose that you did. No, no. Well, I want to bring it up for two reasons. The first of which is I completely dropped the ball. Completely dropped the ball. You had COVID. I did, but we didn't have Matt Millar on. You had COVID that day. I scrapped it in my brain. I was like, there's no way. He's focusing hard on just trying to stay upright for yeah. two hours. Let's not yeah. bring in any wrinkles. I don't yeah. want to make excuses, yeah. Tom. We're, Fair enough. We're winners around here. <laughs> I forgot to have my man Matt Moore on and to do the guess this country uh, and or guess where this particular draft pick is from. And I uh, regret it. You can't go back now. It's too late. It's too late. So anyhow. That the day I want to point out that I'm aware that I forgot to do that. And I apologize to you guys because there's a fringe group of Jeff Cameron show listeners that go back like 20 plus years that, that, that are kind of pissed. A little like, Hey man, us old school guys love this thing. We love it. And so I reached out to Millar and I apologized. We'll have to, was he pissed? Oh, well, he's disappointed. Now, he's not mad at me. Yeah. He's not mad at me. I'll have to talk to him because I knew. I was well aware of what day it was. But, man, if yeah, you I saw you, a tough day. if was... you saw you, I was like, man, he just needs to get through this thing. Yeah, I was having a – I only had about a 48-hour window here with the COVID where I where I also I struggled. But I, I I had a tough couple of days. Here's the next level producing that Millar taught me. So he can't be really mad. He's not mad. No, but here's the deal is when you laugh, you will cough because – a. a yeah. Even when you have a regular cold, you get a nagging cough. I do. A I get a ridiculous cough. cough. Yeah. And with COVID, I yeah. heard you on the phone earlier in the day. You're going to laugh. I'm like, no way. That's just going to be 10 minutes of, of cough fest. Well, you can mute me while on, he's talking and yeah, I can laugh. It would have been awkward. It would have been tough. You're not in the you know, studio. It's yeah, a different it's, thing. It's frustrating. But anyhow, so that happened. But that's not why I brought it up. I brought it up, and, and this is as the, oddly, the NBA draft, as it relates to our conversation coming up with Link Jarrett. I now am of the age, and I say this all the time these days, where, you know, you get nostalgic, you get emotional. I, I, I made a joke when I got into my late 30s, early 40s, that pulling up to a red light could make me cry. Like, I, this commercials, now the public's commercials during the holidays. Oh, they get me. Thanksgiving. And every time they get me. Yep. So it's because you get more sentimental for a lot of reasons. Part of that is the growing perspective you have on the past and what lies ahead and how much little or how little time lies ahead. Publix is uh, Ja Morant and you're Malik Beasley. <laughs> it's every time. It is every time. And so, anyway, I'm watching the NBA draft, man, and I just smiled ear to ear. It's a good kind of watering up, you know, ear to ear as those kids, men, live out a lifelong dream and share it with their parents and their, and their loved ones that are there, their brothers and sisters that are there. And there were a couple of guys that I think were trying hard to, to stay locked in and be tough. And they couldn't, they couldn't cause the call came and their defenses went down and you could see them. They, the realization, Oh, it's happening. 
It's not, it's not, it's no longer, maybe it's going to happen. Maybe you can believe it in your mind all you want that, Hey, they project me to go top five, but then that first pick comes and it's not you. That second pick comes and it's not you. That third pick comes, you're like, Oh, okay. What's happening here. And I'm sure your mind is swimming. Now, you know, you're about to be a multimillionaire. You know, you're going to get drafted in the first round, you know, but still it, you're probably irrational a little bit. And then the phone rings. You're like, Oh, Every minute of every day, every hour, all the sacrifices, all the things you didn't get to go do, the, the time you didn't get to spend with family and friends because you were in the gym working out, working on every aspect of your game. You see it wash over them, and it's overwhelming, and they start to weep. And here I'm sitting at the couch at home by myself, and I'm going, oh, bless his heart. <laughs> I'm getting choked up, too. It's ridiculous. Paolo, how does it feel? man i'm taking care of my family in a way nobody out there can relate to <laughs> i'm doing better for my family than you do yeah but they never your say dreams that. yeah they never so it's funny because um it it happens and i i find myself just smiling i love these things now i no longer find it boring i'm like oh that's beautiful it's good for them look at that kid he's worked so hard i don't even have the guys but i don't even know who this kid is some dude from France could have grown up on a vineyard. Who knows? <laughs> I'm like, oh, bless his heart. What a dream to get to America and play in the NBA. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I do it. Um, but it makes me laugh. Uh, but but that said, that said, I was thinking that, you know, when you do let your guard down, like, what a moment. What a cool thing. So we'll ask Link all about it here coming up pretty shortly. After all, uh, now, now you got to get to the getting. Now you got to get to the the whole kick and ass. Hey, thanks, David. Um, people, David wants to know if uh, we're going to get poached, Tom. Make our way over to the ACC network where uh, Packer and Durham got the axe. I think I uh, saw today. I some people sent that's, that. To uh, me. That's why I'm wearing a black hat today. It's just mm, a dark just, day in the broadcasting biz. Is it? It's, it's a sad moment for the ACC footprint. <laughs> what can you do? Um, I I um I will just tell you this. Uh, I. Uh, yeah, yeah, everybody's got a price. Oh boy. No, everybody's got a price. Uh are you are you openly negotiating for the deal now? To, to no, be, no, 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 What's no, going on here? No, no, no. I'm just saying, uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm taking that job, but everybody does have a price. But uh, you know, you never know. You never know. We'll see if we get the call, Tom. Will you come with me? We'll roll on up to, to Charlotte. Well, they're moving the ACC home offices, so it depends yeah. on where it's gonna be, it's right? Going from Greensboro probably to Charlotte, I think. Yeah. We both like Charlotte. I like Charlotte fine. Uh, I have a price too. So, you know, yeah, but I mean, like I said, look alive, look alive. Like I said, you never know. You never know. We now wield a lot of authority in these. Here oh parts. I'm just saying you never know. You never know. I don't want that job per se, but I can be persuaded. I, no, you'd have to pay me a lot to do that job. I mean, really, to you'd kiss have to pay the a ring, lot. to kiss the ring, not to kiss. Well, you'd, the ACC. Ha you'd have, to do, that. have to do that. It's easier to kiss uh, the ring, proverbially speaking of when Jim Phillips says something, it doesn't sound ridiculous versus like Swafi. That would be a problem. Uh, but I'm sorry that, you know, if Wake and Syracuse are playing in lacrosse, that I have to do an interview for 12 minutes about that, that would be, you have see, to pay a lot of money. Now, all jokes aside, and uh, listen, no, nobody's contacted me about the ACC. I, I would probably get in trouble within the first month, and then we'd have a problem. And uh, yeah. Right. That'd be a problem. You know, I'm that, not that necessarily. That would be a clause of my contract. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. he gets in trouble, I still get paid. Right. That, that's, I think that's literally what it would say in the contract. Yeah. yeah but here, But here's the thing all jokes aside. So you brought up a, a, an important point, and we're talking about the long-term viability of a conference that is woefully behind right now, uh, the SEC, the Big Ten. And, and, and we talk about the money that, that, that's not there moving forward and how frustrating that can be and how it puts you at a competitive disadvantage, a distinct competitive disadvantage. One of the, one of the reasons that that network, I think, probably made the move that they did, and I have no inside information on the inner workings of the ACC network and why they told Packer and Durham to take it on down the road, but having lengthy conversations about lacrosse, period, seems to me to, to have a deleterious effect on the popularity of your yeah. radio program. Like a television uh, show, sir. Television whatever show. Whatever the hell. It's probably not a good idea to spend an inordinate amount of time talking about lacrosse. Right, that's the thing. You'd have to pay a lot to for to you, care about the ACC as a whole. Like no, that's that's a job. Well, I'll tell you what. If you do, if, if whoever gets that job, the the right listen, Jim Phillips ought to be demanding that, that we have far less of the lacrosse talk. That's great. Make mention when somebody wins a national championship, we, we are 
uplifting the conference here. So I get it. Somebody wins in track. Somebody wins in swimming. Way somebody to go, wins. Boston College. Yeah. Speed walking. Good, good national job. championship. Good job. Speed Somebody's got to win a national championship. Might as well be an ACC team. Good job, BC. There you go. At least you contributed something to this conference, you sorry asses. But, yeah, so there you go. That right. That That's how you do this, right? But you, you would seem to me, if you want to set somebody up to succeed, then you get a guy in there that has a thing to say or two about all this stuff, and you then you you let them do their thing, but you set them up by having tomorrow you're going to have Mike Norvell on, on Wednesday you're going to have Dabo Sweeney on, on Friday you're going to have so-and-so on, next week you're going to have the starting middle linebacker for so-and-so, then you're going to have the starting running back. You're going to constantly have these guys that the people in this conference care about, and that then it would be easy for you and I to sit in there because we do it every day here. With a, with, with a central theme being Florida State in the middle of the offseason, it can be a toughie. It can be a toughie. You've got a central theme. Now, I'm able to talk about whatever the hell I want. It is the Jeff Cameron Show. If I want to talk golf, tiddlywinks, people getting attacked by lions, whatever. I can. But if you said, no, you can't do that. Here are the perimeters. You're not doing that. You parameters, you're not doing that. You're going to talk ACC. AC, well, then I'm going to talk ACC football. I'm going to talk big picture. Where the hell are we going? Because this is a problem. you got to have that compelling oh, conversation. And you can't have that conversation on the ACC network. That's precisely the conversation they don't want you to have. Well, but you can if there's a plan. You can if you're not, if you don't have your head in it. People don't want, the, they don't want you to pretend that this thing isn't there. The elephant in the room isn't there. They want to know, are you doing something about it? A, you recognize it. B, what are you doing about it? So if there's a plan, you can. It's okay. What's the to, plan? The plan is hope. Hope it works out. I don't think that's the plan. I, I I think that Jim Phillips has probably a structured plan. Doesn't mean it'll work. Yeah, well, like what what leverage does he have to execute the plan? At the end of the day, you can have a plan of how to get out of a sleeper hold, but if it's locked in, you're going down, man. That's it. Yeah, fine. That's the argument we're having right here on the ACC network, buddy. You and I, fine. But at least we're armed with something to have a realistic discussion about is what I'm saying at that point. you got to let people do that. You can't BS these people and talk to them about lacrosse. You can't, that's not what we're doing over here. That's precisely what they're we, doing over there. Not anymore. That's when I fired their ass. So that's what I'm saying. You think that was their idea, though? I'm not Like, you so know, sure. Packer wakes up. He's like, I can't wait today. Remember, I asked well, for this two not, weeks ago. I'm now. not going to hey. two weeks ago. I asked for this, and you kept you kept bumping him. Now, We're going to have the lacrosse coach on today. <laughs> damn it! You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I'm not going to sit here. I, I don't presume to know, but I have my suspicions that there it, it it was not. He wasn't put out to have to do that. Whereas you or I would be like, "What? Oh, come on, man! Have you ever heard his show on the on its own?" Yeah, I have it. Mm. Well, I did when it was there. It was a call-in show. Yeah, he didn't give a damn. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So, but that's different yes. than him walking into the production meeting I'm saying, saying "Get me every lacrosse he coach in this conference." Care. My thing is, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. Whereas, if you or I were in that room or anybody with a pulse, we'd go, "No, man, no. It's the third day this week. I got to talk about some a hole that won something two weeks ago in lacrosse. I'm not doing it. They want it for the AC. Somebody's got to win it. How are we supposed to garner ratings hey. with this?" Oh, hey, everybody, look at this. Frank's on again, talking about the big midweek matchup against Duke and lacrosse. This ought to kick ass. Stay with us next. I mean, that would be the worst. You've got the hots for this job, don't you? I don't. I'm just telling you, it seems so easy. It seems uh, it's not hard. Let's take a break and talk to Link Jarrett. What do we do? <laughs> we got a good assignment. We've got a really good assignment next. Link Jarrett will join us. It's Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. Hi, my name is Shannon Pash, and I'm the principal at Red Hills Academy. We will provide a challenging, rigorous curriculum. We will also work with our students to teach them how to set goals and then how to work to reach those goals. Red Hills Academy will offer the Spanish language every day. Relationships are really important to us, not just with our students, but with our families and the community. This benefits parents and students alike because parents get that involvement within the school. Easily apply online today at redhillsacademy.com. Hey, no fans, our partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF. Your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. 
You've heard the saying before, life is short, so why not savor it? Enjoy a chic and elegant dining experience in the heart of downtown Tallahassee with a vision for seasonally inspired and regionally sourced cuisine. Rub elbows with movers and shakers and cocktail connoisseurs at the bar and browse the carefully curated wine list. The one and only savor brings more to the table for the most fastidious foodies. Relax, take it all in and savor it online at savortallahassee.com. Now go, go call Seminole Glass. Now get on the road and get it done fast. Your local family-owned glass company, serving the Big Bend for over 15 years. At Seminole Auto Glass, we care about your safety. Insurance will send you wherever it benefits them, not the quality of service. There's a difference in auto glass companies. Trust your local auto glass experts. Seminole Auto Glass. They get on any kind of broken glass, and you know who they are. Better call Seminole. <laughs> Hi, this is Jamie McClenney from Trek Financial in Tallahassee. Managing downside risk in your portfolio is one of the biggest challenges that you'll face in retirement. Trillions of dollars in stimulus from the Federal Reserve and D.C. politicians, combined with zero interest rates, have propped up financial markets since the financial crisis ended in 2009. The Fed recently ended quantitative easing and has started to raise interest rates at a time when the global economy was already slowing. Have you considered what another 50% correction in the stock market would do to your retirement plan? If you're concerned about where this all might be headed and would like to find out about the potential benefits of an active risk management strategy for your portfolio, give me a call at 850-900-5200 and schedule a time for a review of your portfolio from an active risk management perspective. Make Jamie your first call for a second opinion. Investment advisory services are offered through Trek Financial, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Hey, this is your chiropractor, Dr. Ryan Finn with Finn Chiropractic, encouraging you to spring into health. People are outside, working and playing, enjoying Tallahassee's beauty, but new injuries and sinus problems are blooming everywhere. While we at Finn Chiropractic have helped thousands with spring-related issues, the only way to know if we can help you or your loved one is to come in for the phenomenal health evaluation. Go to FinnChiro.com to take advantage of our new patient special offer. That's F-E-N-N, FinnChiro.com. And remember, your chiropractor loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. Watching on War Chant TV, like and subscribe, share, let others find the uh, find the good stuff, and uh, it helps us out. We appreciate all of you uh, who do exactly that. And thanks for listening on ninety three three Real Talk Radio as as well. Another show uh, this week tomorrow, I believe Friday. We are off for the long weekend, Independence Weekend, and all that good stuff. I don't know what y'all are doing. I'll be off. Well, you're going to New York, buddy. Yes, sir. Be a good time. Yeah, you're going to have a real good time. Link Jarrett is set to join us here in a couple of minutes. Uh, when he does, we will begin uh, that interview. In the interim, what night is it? It's Friday night or is it Saturday that you're at the Mets game? I'll be Friday night. Friday night. Yeah. So I, it looks like it's a Taiwan Walker start right now, but we'll see. Taiwan Walker start. I'm going <clears> to <throat> perhaps uh, put a little wager in there for you and we'll have a little fun with that. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Where are you going? Somewhere you can gamble? Well, I mean. <laughs> I'm right here, aren't I? Uh, I see Link there. I don't see him, but I see the name. Uh, I don't know if it's audio. That's fine. That's a green room uh, in the beginning. Once I, I think we'll have a video feed come up. So we will uh, get to that. Hey, by the way, you guys out there, uh, I mentioned this a moment ago, but uh, if you have questions, I obviously have 
several for link, but uh, for you guys out there who are also so excited about this, um, if you want to throw some questions in the chat, if uh, if you would, I'd get started now. And the reason for that is, again, obviously, I can't get uh, to all those. I don't even know that I'll get to, um, to to one of them. But if they're good enough, then we'll swipe up and we'll make it happen and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. I'll have an opportunity to do that and I'll ask him some of those questions. So while they get that worked out, uh, technically, uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, I'll confirm if it's video or audio only. Just give me one moment. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I don't want to keep the man waiting. So whatever it is uh, he's able to do, we can we can go from there. Uh, and and listen, w- one of the things, and and if he can hear me now, uh, he, he could probably uh, you know, prepare himself for this. I do, I, do, I am curious to see how that meeting with the players went. Um, I think that's got to be an exciting time for a coach. Uh, and for me. I would think that uh, you, you, you get a dream job, you get excited about that, and then you have an opportunity to meet your players and, and begin to kind of discuss the plan moving forward um, and, and map out expectations. Uh, mapping out expectations is um, I, I, I obviously of vital importance. So from there, I think that's a go. Nope, we're still figuring it out. <laughs> Live radio, folks. Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't want to scurry along and then not get back to what I'm trying to get to here because obviously, um, this is the highlight of the day right now. I mean, it's uh, it's it's exciting. And go to warchant.com for our top 40 preview. There you go. <laughs> no promos. It's going to be an audio only. Yeah, no, I just saw your laughter and I was like, that. that's fine. Let's bring up. Uh, Link Jerry, if he's there now, I will go and bring in the new head man at Florida State. Coach, are you there? Jeff, can you hear me? I got you now. How are you, Link? I'm doing great. We're rocking and rolling here. We, we're we all about it. We're just going uh, audio, and we're in the office trying to sort some things out, Jeff, to say the least. Well, hey, listen, I'm just glad that you've joined us. You're live now. We're good. I only need to hear you. I don't have to see. I saw you yesterday. You're good to go, sir, and I thank you for making the time. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Uh, and and right off the bat, I'll ask you the hard hitting question: If whether or not you're going to keep the third base side in the, as the home dugout or move it back to first. First base. <laughs> first um, base. You know the the facility is designed for us to be on the first base side, and I understand why they wanted to go to the third base side. I I get the logic of it um, for how I coach and what I'm doing the first base side made a lot more sense and your your cages and your bullpen, the accessibility to those areas clearly better on the first base side and the locker room, much more accessible through that little walkway. It just makes sense for me and how I do things here. Coach, I'm wondering, I I, want to go back a ways. Uh, We know a lot of the same people, believe it or not. I I actually, um, Jeff Hogan uh, worked with my son and uh, I know your, your ties to, to Florida High and uh, as a player. And then uh, you get asked all the time about Mike Martin, and understandably so. 11, uh, obviously a legend, and for good reason. But I, I want to go all the way back to, to perhaps what you may have learned um, from Jeff Hogan. And uh, he's in the, for those that don't know out there that are listening, he's in the FSU Hall of Fame twice over. Uh, such a good coach and, and, and a great guy. And, you know, I know, Link, in 92, what, you had four Florida high grads on that FSU roster, uh, you and McCray and uh, Serrano and, and Beavis. I, just how did he help shape your coaching philosophy? Yeah, and McKelly Bertoldi was with us. So there was a yeah. time when we probably had five. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, Hogue was a baseball purist, and he was a motivator. So he really made you appreciate working at the game outside of the practices. And he made a point to call out the guys he always found doing a little extra work. And it became rewarding for him to see you going the extra mile. And, you know, our field was actually maintained by Florida State at the time, and it was right down the road here, right. not yeah. where it is. So we had a nice setup to go work and we worked at it a lot. And and the groups of guys that would just gather at that field on the weekends um, to just hone their craft 
not travel ball. We're not talking about driving all over the world to try to play AAU travel ball, perfect game stuff. We just kind of gathered at that field and guys from other schools would be there. My dad had a key. He would drag the field. My dad would order pizzas would just show up Saturday, Sunday. And we just kind of hung out and Hogue cultivated that atmosphere of enjoy working at it. And then you kind of see the rewards of your work in winning. And many of our players went on to college and professional careers. So it was a very unique experience. And I think his uncanny trait to make you feel good about working at it was a difference in his style that I noticed at a very young age. You're describing almost an idyllic situation, Coach. Um, I, I, I am interested, just since you brought it up, because I have these discussions with people a lot, and I know there's good, bad, and everything. What are your thoughts on on the world of, uh, of baseball for the youth of today in the sense that you brought up travel ball? And, and I think most people hear travel ball, a lot of people, I shouldn't say most, a lot of people hear travel ball and they kind of roll their eyes. There, there are a lot of negatives that come out of that. There are a lot of positives as well. But what are your thoughts on uh, what it means to be a kid wanting to play baseball today? Well, you know, the, the positives are you get to go play at a lot of neat venues. I, I, my son went through it. He just graduated from NC State, played five years. He got to play at age 15, 16 at UNC's field, at South Carolina's field, at NC State's field. Like you're playing summer ball, not at high school fields, but at really nice world-class college venues. Now, not all the games are there, but it sure is fun to roll in on Saturday morning to South Carolina Stadium and play a really neat game. Mm. So you have that. Now, the, the traveling involved in getting to these places from, you know, in our case, it was the middle of North Carolina. It's very challenging on the families and it gets expensive. But what you're doing is providing the kids with a chance to be recruited and to be seen. And all of the college sports have exploded, I think, in, a, in terms of recruiting and uh, what people do to try to see the best athletes. So you're, you're putting them out there. Um, the downside is I think you have to be cautious, especially with the pitchers, because this can't turn into a year-round competitive setting for those 15- and 16-year-old arms to throw all year. Right. So that's, that's the concern. And who's really monitoring their workload and their innings and number of pitches and what they do in between their outings and their conditioning and the arm care? That, that is my biggest concern. And everybody wants to perform and be seen. And I think the effort to do that from a pitching side is the biggest risk in the whole game. And as the, as the players become more professionally attractive, then you bring the scouting world into it as well. And the demands on the pitchers mm. can be damaging. So all of our recruits, we, we constantly tell them, please let us monitor your workload. And if the New York Yankees want you to throw a bullpen on July 18th, just please let us help you maintain some semblance of routine and arm care in between all the things you're doing. Because it's hard to tell the New York Yankees or the Braves or the Marlins, and you know what, I, I'm not really going to throw that day. It doesn't fit into my... Uh, my schedule. So I get it. We just need to protect those young arms. Speaking of young, when you were young, Link, I, I, I have been told that you almost didn't come to Florida State for whatever reason it was. I know you wanted to, but it was, it was going to work out that maybe you weren't. What did it? I guess I would ask you the process of you getting here as a player. Now you're the coach. We're going to we'll 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 talk about that in a moment. But getting here as a player, I watched you play. I was in school at the same time as you. Uh, what was that like? The recruiting. I graduated high school in 1990 and the recruiting was as opposite of what I just explained with the, the travel ball situation as it could be. If somebody didn't show up to the Tuesday afternoon game down the road to watch us play, I, they weren't going to see you. 
Right. Um, I mean, to send videos out in 1989 of a VHS tape of you working out or something, I, that really wasn't the way to go. You could go to the camps. You know, the camps have diminished a little bit in terms of going somewhere for five days and learning from the coaches. It's more a one-day watch-me thing. Um, then you had Legion Ball in the summer. You're hoping you could get a coach from somewhere to come watch you. And obviously much more difficult to navigate that than our present day recruiting situation and the technology that's available in the video. Everything's out there on every player. Um, to be honest with you, uh, being local definitely helped. You know, and I played with Junior on some teams, and 11 would come to some of our games. And um, probably not being a standout type player, the fact that Jamie, 11, Chip, had a chance to stumble across me playing was what helped. And you didn't, you didn't learn a lot if you watched me one game. I, I think my strength as a player was more the long haul. So I think they saw that and the draft hit and they had a couple guys on the team that were drafted that signed. And I think they lost at least, at least one infield recruit. And it was well after my senior year had ended academically, I was out of school that um, coach Martin invited me down to the stadium and, and Jamie and Chip. And I sat with coach Martin and he, presented me with an opportunity to be on the team. And that's all I really wanted. Um, I, I had a couple other schools, Mercer and the University of West Florida recruited me and good programs. But being from here and having the feeling of, I can help Florida State. I know I just need a chance. That's what they gave me. And uh, I probably didn't deserve it at the time. Uh, I, I had a chance to step out there as a freshman after a game or two and ended up starting. And, you know, Coach Martin saw in me, I guess, that that ability to execute the game the way he wanted the game handled in the infield. And um, I played some defense for him, and I kind of stuck out there. And he gave me a chance when, quite frankly, I there were probably far better players that deserved it more. The timing worked. He gave me an opportunity, and you know I was so fortunate to just be in the right place at the right time with him. Florida State head baseball coach Link Jarrett joining us on the Jeff Cameron Show. Um, how, if you can, if you're willing to divulge, or how much you want to divulge, did your interaction with the players go? This is about their development and, and their buy-in to what we're going to have to do with our system. Um, I'm not saying my system is, I'm not reinventing the game, but there's obviously things in my 20 years of this that I've taken a liking to of how to, how to run things. And we talked a little bit about what we're going to try to do. Um, those guys were very engaged. I think there's 19 new guys that are here in summer school and they were all there. Handful of returners were in the room. And then everybody else was on a Zoom mechanism where they could listen and watch. And you know, we, we talked about things that were important to me, big picture stuff within the program. I did not get too in-depth on the details of the strategy of what we do. But, but I wanted them to know certain things about my expectations in, in terms of how they represent the program, which is, is very dear to me and to them, but we have an obligation to do things at an elite level in the classroom, on the baseball field, and in the regional community, in the campus community. And uh, I want those guys to know all of those things are important. And I've, I've seen parallels in, in my teams as a head coach, the teams that seem to do the the best in the classroom and really are engaged in the campus and regional community. For me, those have been my most competitive teams on the field. And I told them that, and I expect them to perform and 
raise the bar a little bit in the classroom. And obviously we're here to win championships and uh, we have a, a ways to go. We, we've got some young players that are going to be counted on heavily this year. You know, I obviously like the composition of the pitching staff. The draft will determine just how dynamic that is. But, you know, I, I like where we're headed, Jeff. I'm curious, Link, you, you're bringing it up. I, I guess you're, you're obviously talking about what that does, which is create a buy-in when you're talking about more involvement with the community uh, in the classroom. All those things create that buy-in. What does an ideal FSU baseball recruit look like to you? Well, this really starts on the mound. And you, you have to have competitive – arms, but you have to have a variety of arms and not everybody can be a starting pitcher. And, and I think that's something we're going to have to make really clear here is there are going to be some guys that start games, but they're probably not going to finish them. And sometimes this thing gets hairy in the fourth inning, the fifth inning, the sixth inning, you have to have some horsepower in the middle of the game to, to dodge some of the traffic and some of the mess that you find yourself in to keep your team in a game. Those innings are really important. And then the back end of the game, those last six outs, three outs, they're, they're just as important as the first three, sometimes more. So starting on the mound and unselfishness on the mound and having different roles, huge. We have to be athletic in the field. Like our infield has to be athletic, sound, rangy. The outfield guys have to be able to cover ground and – Hauser's a unique place. There's not a lot of room in right field, but you're going to play a lot of games away from Hauser, and you have to be rangy. You have to be able to take extra base hits away in the outfield, and you have to be intelligent defensively. So those are the fundamentals and the pieces that keep you in every game, every game. Offensively, if you have athleticism on the field, I think you'll find that you have some options offensively of, how you break through and score runs against good arms. You have to be able to run the bases. There's times you have to be able to steal. There's times you have to be able to bunt. If you're not physical enough, like the extra base hit and the home run is not enough of a factor. So you really need that dimension to your offense too. So I think the overall athleticism on the field gives you options offensively. I, I think trying to design your offense based on one component, be it, you know what, we're going to hit for power, or you know what, we're going to play the short game and out short game people. Jeff, I don't know if that works. I, I, mm -hmm. think, I think you have to have multiple ways offensively that you can create. And not every game is the same. Um, the arms you face, not everybody's going to give you the same opportunity. So the more buttons you have to push and the more comfortable the athletes are executing that plan at any given moment, the better chance you have offensively to break through and open games up. That's how I look at this. Link, you mentioned Hauser. Uh, you've been away for a while. I have been a vocal critic. I used to love uh, Dick Hauser Stadium, Mike Martinfield. I still do. And because I love it, I want to see it improved. I know there are long-term plans to help Hauser. What about in the short term? What are some things that can be done to create a better atmosphere at Hauser? Now, the fans here are diehard. You know that. You played here. You went to games here. You know this was the gem of college baseball for so long. And we've seen all these upgrades within the ACC, upgrades within the SEC. We see these different stadiums that, frankly, in my opinion, have gone and surpassed Hauser. It drives me nuts. I'm biased, admittedly. But what can be done to help Hauser and create that feel again that existed for so long here in Tallahassee? Yeah, you know, that's a good one, Jeff. Uh, you know, we, weren't, we were in Mississippi State last year for the Super Regional. You know, we were at Tennessee this year. My son played at Arkansas for his Super Regional last year. Yeah. I've coached in the SEC. I've been to every stadium in the ACC. Um I know there are some people that are really pushing baseball way, way up the pole of importance at the institution. Baseball is very important here. Um, there are 
Michael has expressed to me his desire to really do some big things here. And I get it. And his heart is in moving this athletic department forward. I sensed it from my first conversation with him. I get it. In the short term, Jeff, I want it to be cleaned up. You know, like the new padding and some of the things we did last year, I think they put the new garnet padding in the wall. Yeah. When I walked in this year to play, that was beautiful. Like the old green padding that was discolored and <laughs> torn up. Like some of the things that we can control immediately like that, they may, that may not be the answer you want, but I just want to clean things up, like modernize the cages a little bit. Our home bullpen back on the first base side. I was talking to Chip and Dane today, like, guys, let's, let's get this thing up to speed down there. The guys spend so much time in the cage and the home bullpen. It's got to be tidy and clean and if we need to re-turf it let's do it that's where things change um you know cosmetically underneath there's some basic things that need to be done and michael's on it and we got to paint and we got to clean up and tidy up and touch up um the backstop netting i know this isn't what you want to hear but we're getting new backstop netting you should be able to see through it a lot easier than you see through it right now um these are the best fans in the country. The way they appreciate the details of the game here, they deserve the best shot to watch and enjoy the competition. So there's some things that are happening around us. Is it blowing this up and building something else right now? No. Can you function here? Yes. We had 1,800 seats at Notre Dame. 1,800 yep. seats. All right? Not great. But if the guys go out there and perform and play and engage, manage the game, you can win. And when you win, things will take care of themselves. The big picture stuff, it's going to happen. I could talk to you all day, but you don't have that time. And unfortunately, I don't either as advertisers demand their, their time. But, hey, Link, congratulations. We'll talk again here real soon. And it's, it's, it's great to have you on. Great to have you aboard. I wish you the best of luck, sir. Jeff, thanks for thanks for having me, man. Look Absolutely. forward to seeing you in person. Absolutely. You take care, Link. That's uh, Link Jarrett, the new head coach there at FSU. And, uh, again, I would have liked to have had him on for another hour. Uh, I, I get a sense we'll be able to talk again here real soon. Um, but uh, congratulations to him. I had more questions. But he was thorough today, and I appreciate that. And I also appreciate the candor. Uh, that was nice. That was nice. Now, I know we have a lot of catching up to do. We're going to press this now, and then we'll go forward and come back in the second hour here and, and react to our Link Jarrett interview. If you want to press it, we got two minutes and change. Well, okay, well, real, yeah, real, let's press it because there's no sense in stopping here. Real quick, I'll just say this: um, you know, I, the, the passion that you hear there is is such a um, easy thing to latch on to and the right thing to latch on to. But I think it's genuine, and I think you can hear that, and I think that's why a lot of people have responded the way that they have over the last uh, several days. And, uh, by the way, well done, Link. I'm glad you got that shot in there on the 1800 seats. <laughs> uh, not great. Not great. Not great. That was good. Uh, you know, I don't know that it'll transpire this way or translate this way. I have a sense that it will, uh, to be honest with you, but I think they're going to pick up the baseball, Tom. I think they're going to be where they're supposed to be. I think these things are going to happen. That's just the feeling that I get. Yeah, I get the feeling that he didn't like the idea of being in the third base dugout either. With what what's more importantly, the third baseline, left field line bullpen, which is just, I mean, what no, we, yeah. that's not what we do. Yeah, no, that was good. That was good. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we'll talk to him again. We've got an off season and he's just getting going and man's got a uh, busy schedule and, and and we have advertisers to, uh, to satisfy. So there's no sense that <clears throat> to push that over, but, I am excited uh, about this tenure, and I am excited to see what he does. I didn't get a chance to ask him. The only thing I didn't get the chance to ask him, because I know it would have taken a little bit of time, but uh, you know, I am curious to how quickly um, he'll announce uh, his staff. Uh, that That's the big thing that he's probably working on now that he's met with the players. That's going to be quick. It has to be. It has to be quick. And, and there are some names out there. I know many of you clued into the baseball rumor mill that are locked in on the world of baseball. It's, a, it's kind of a close-knit group. You know some of the names that are out there. I've heard some rumors. 
Uh, there's a there's a coach at Alabama that has ties here and all that stuff. We'll see. I don't know what's going to happen, but um, I bet we'll get that announcement real soon. Hour number two forthcoming. We'll react more to that. If you missed it, make sure you go back on War Chant TV and watch. It's Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. News now. An 18-year-old is facing murder and aggravated assault charges in connection to a Lanier County shooting that left one dead and others injured. Shaman Jacavius Campbell was charged with felony murder and four counts of aggravated assault in connection to the shooting. Savion McRae, 18 years old, died as a result of the shooting. The GBI said Campbell turned himself in on June 22nd. He is currently in the Coffee County Jail. An employee at St. Philip's AME Church noticed the church sign had been spray painted in graffiti when they returned to work over the weekend. The worker noticed the words "My Body" spray painted on the sign at the entrance and called 911. The worker said seeing the graffiti on their sign hurts the church and brought them into the middle of the abortion debate through no fault of their own. The church does have a surveillance camera, but it does not point towards the area where the vandalism happened. LCSO responded to another call about vandalism on Dove Road later that day, but are unsure if the two calls were related. This is Rachel Linnae with your World Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tell us, go to Mac Store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Scattered thunderstorms likely this afternoon. Otherwise, more clouds and sun. Highs around 92. Winds out of the southeast around 5 miles per hour. Cloudy skies expected tonight. Chance for scattered thunderstorms. Lows dip down to about 73. Chance for scattered thunderstorms again tomorrow. Highs level off around 91. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 94. Crawfordville Auto and Tire. Crawfordville Auto and Tire. Oh, hey there. I was just singing the praises of Crawfordville Auto and Tire. They do just about everything. Complete engine rebuilds, brakes, shocks, tires, oil change, you name it, they do it. And they offer a 12-month, 12,000-mile warranty on all parts and labor. Most of the time, they can service your car the same day and offer towing to help you get to the shop. Now that's something to sing about. Open weekdays from 7.30 in the morning until 6 at night. Crawfordville Auto repair and tires well 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 hey jeff look at this place yeah My yeah goodness. well doing well it's been a while since i've seen you brother but uh you know it hasn't been a while since i've been over to gordo's i go there on the regular because of you eddie well we keep you regular well that's true but i think of gordo's as a place to sit down have a cold beer talk to your friends enjoy the sports eat the delicious food but i think of you as uncle eddie a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town i appreciate that jeff hey and we'll keep you regular Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Here's what you missed on the Greg Tish Show. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Pastor Tabner was alone with a female church employee. Oops. She and a towel, and he and his boxers. The charismatic 41-year-old Hurley explained the two of them had been making chili and gotten food on the floor. <laughs> With the hot dogs that they were making, we are hoping that the pastor used the right condiments. I think there was at least one hot dog involved. I don't know what you're talking about. We were just making chili dogs. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. This is Kyle, service manager from Barano Heating and Air. Schedule an appointment from your mobile device to learn about our total comfort service program. With guaranteed same-day service, 15% off necessary repairs, and $25 berry books to use towards air filters and other products. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Barano Heating and Air. Any day, anytime, anywhere. Online at BaranoAC.com. Florida license, CAC 1816-186. Sellers Tile does it better for business owners, contractors, designers, and homeowners. Better design ideas, better quality tile, carpet, and hardwood flooring, better mosaics, ceramic, and vinyl solutions. And Sellers makes it easier with their amazing showroom and first-class professionals. Maybe it's time to get Sellers working for you on Capitol Circle Northeast, just north of Mayhem Drive, or online at SellersTile.com. For better style, quality, and design, go with Sellers. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show. Live. Live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFD, Greta Tallahassee. Breaking news this hour from townhall.com. I'm John Scott. The crowded mall in the Ukrainian city of Kremenchuk has become the latest example used in allegations of war crimes against Russia. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky included a video in his daily address 
that he said made it clear that the Kremlin took more blast by Russian forces was intentional. It's clear that the Russian assassins received these coordinates for this missile. They wanted to kill as many people as possible in a peaceful city in a regular mall. Russia has claimed that they were targeting a nearby arms depot, which detonated and set them all on fire. Survivor Ihor Ishenko lay in a hospital bed with bandages covering his leg. He remembered the moment the blast struck. I went to Anstor to get my phone repaired. I went inside, got coffee. I walked for five to seven meters, and there was a red and orange flash, then a rocket. Ukraine's prosecutor general has warned Ukrainians to expect a similar strike every minute. I'm Karen Chamas. Also at townhall.com, former President Trump is reacting to the testimony of former White House staffer Cassidy Hutchinson, who appeared before the January 6th committee. Bill Alexander reports. Hutchinson gave compelling testimony before the committee. Everything from testimony about Donald Trump knowing the rioters were armed that day to Trump becoming irate, throwing plates of food on the wall, and even trying to make White House security teams drive him to Capitol Hill in the presidential limousine. In a response, Donald Trump said he hardly knows Cassidy, but he knew negative things about her, calling her a leaker and a phony. He said she wanted to join his team in Florida after his term in office, and he personally turned her down. I'm Bill Alexander, SRN News, Washington. The stocks are mixed now. The Dow is ahead 135 points, but the Nasdaq is down seven. More at townhall.com. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshares. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, well, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, founder and CEO of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. And the process started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. Timeshare is the only thing that you can buy that you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. When you buy a timeshare, you give them a blank check to fill out any amount they want for annual maintenance and assessment fees. Sounds crazy, right? Well, the crazy thing is this never ends. Stop the insanity today. Call my office now. I guarantee if we can't cancel your timeshare, you'll pay nothing. Were you lied to when buying a timeshare and want out? Get the facts about timeshare cancellation. Call Wesley now for your free information kit. 800-691-9999. 800-691-9999. 800-691-9999. Let me tell you what T-Spark stands for. It stands for strength, commitment, teamwork, and heart. We don't ever quit until we've got nothing left to give. Our team is unstoppable. Want a guaranteed win? Call T-Spark Enterprises for your next roofing or construction project. We conquer all peaks. T-SparkConstruction.com. License number CCC1331204. Summertime sweat rings are just around the corner. Get that AC fixed before you're spending your summer with no relief from the heat. Call ENB Heating and Air and ask about the new customer diagnostic special for just $49.95. Call ENB Heating and Air today at 850-848-0187. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a -a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... last hour for a good 25 minutes so if you missed that interview you're going to want to go back and find it of course you can find it on war chant tv go to the youtube go 
to the YouTube, kids. Yeah, you can find it on this particular video. So if you find today's show, the DVR yeah. function is a beautiful thing. You can even do that when you're watching live, folks. I don't know if you know that, but like with YouTube, you just a little... have a passion for the DVR function. I'll tell you what, I've never met anybody who champions the DVR function more than you. And I don't mean that as a uh, derogatory remark. I'm just, you love your ass and yes, DVR I do. function on the YouTube. Well, not just on the YouTube, but in general. So, for example, if you want to watch a hockey game, right? Yeah. And intermissions take time, dude. They, do. they, they take suck. time. Yeah. And so do TV breaks and all that. You, if you start a hockey game about 45 minutes behind, I'll do this for the playoffs, right. but for the regular season, about 45 minutes behind, you'll never watch a commercial break the entire time. It's you glorious. just created 45 minutes more for you to do whatever the hell you want. Yes. I love that efficiency. Um, no, I just, I think it's great. I like that. The, if, if they had, if they needed a spokesman, I'd nominate Tom Lang. I'd be like, listen, my man, Tom Lang thinks your DVR function is to beat the band. Let him talk about you. I'm going to tell you right now, people will just be signing up left and right. <laughs> By the way, on Twitter, it's at Jay Cameron Show. The point would be, go find the interview if you missed it. It was a good one. Our thanks to Link. I enjoyed speaking with him. I look forward to seeing the staff get put together and the product on the field. And uh, hopefully, uh, the the demanding of some uh, significant changes uh, regarding Hauser and the uptick in uh, presentation, as well as obviously some of the stuff that needs to happen in the innards. Um, so it's, it's, it's important. Um, cave I too have Metronet. So does Tom, I think, or did you switch over? No, I'd switch before you did. Yeah. Well, I thought you switched <laughs> over and then didn't, I thought you went somewhere else. I couldn't remember. This is not a spokesman situation cave on, but, uh, off the record whoops ass. Yeah. They do a great job. And I, and you know what I did? I went crazy. I bought all those heroes. I got them all over the house. Nice. I got like 20 of them. You can't you can't go through the Cameron household without being connected to mm -hmm. Wi-Fi. It's almost annoying. They're fighting for your Wi-Fi. It's all here. This this the hallway Eero it wants you. The kitchen Eero wants you. The living room Eero wants you. The kids' bedrooms Eros want you. The the the, the master bedroom Eero wants you. I got one. In, yeah, no, it's crazy. There's more life in terms of signal in your it, home. Yeah, no, it's out like of control. A rabbit pen. Yeah. No, it's nuts. I, I crack up laughing. I'm always like, oh, look at that. My phone just switched over to the hallway Eero. And now we're in the bathroom, Eero. Look at all these Eros. Those are those little gadgets, guys. That uh, Wi-Fi yeah, range well, extenders. That's correct. Yeah. yeah, you can get Amazon makes them, buddy. I think that's that's who makes them. I, now I'm a shell. Look at me. But you can get them. You don't have to order them off that. You can you can get them locally. Right. You have a. That's what the Director Matthew just said. Is Major Tom has his own you know device he does. now. Yeah. Actually, Major Tom. Uh, for those that don't know, that is our uh, bearded dragon that we have at the house uh there is an hero right next to his thing yeah oh uh, wonderful yeah yeah i'm sure that's not good for him brain cancer that's uh, here we go uh, he's, a, he's a damn bearded dragon he'll live i mean and if he doesn't he doesn't uh Ooh. i mean i'm not trying to actively hurt the bearded dragon i'm just telling you I'm hey just, man just, hey man the boys are watching the show today just letting you know yeah i know but careful you're talking oh to. they know better they, they they're not worried about it they know the deal um no i'm the thing's well taken care of i'm just it's a bearded dragon you know i mean it's like Wi-Fi is more important. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just when I think, just when I think, sometimes you don't want to say it, you do. You say what you mean. No, I'm an animal lover. It's all fine. Everything's good to go. That thing, they're boring. I tried to tell my kids when we got them that we didn't need them. Generally speaking, it's not good to own reptiles. I think that's just a kind of a standard thing for me. Yeah, I had a rough time with uh, my turtle in fourth grade. And we had to give him away. Of course. Because my parents were cleaning out the tank more than I Incessantly, was. Incessantly, because it gets old. And They're uh, filthy. It was a giant turtle, too. It was, uh, yeah, it was a problem. So I... Uh, Very smelly. I was correct in my suspicion, by the way. Can I go back to this? Uh, where the, the kid that chose Miami, the quarterback, he's not getting $9 million. He's not getting $8 million. I think I'm seeing as low as $3 million now. The next thing you're going to hear is it's 50 bucks. 50 bucks he got to go to Miami. I am curious to see because they've been the one to flaunt these situations uh, time and again already. <laughs> already. It's it's like every time a kid goes there, they're like, hey, we signed him to a multi-year deal. We did this, this, and this, and we spoke to him long before the university ever made contact. Come get us. Because they know that there's an outgoing president for the NCAA that can't do anything. And the court's already told the NCAA, you lose. So there's nothing they can do. This gets me back home. This brings me back to Florida State. Let's go. Let's go. Collective, 
Let's just start openly, unabashedly cheating our ass off by the letter of the law because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Ain't nobody coming. They do that. I, I, did you see this weekend? So there was a, a video, a short video clip of John Cooper on the bench for the Lightning doing this, talking about a deflection yeah. coming out of the zone. Yeah. So I didn't at them. I said, this is me looking at Rising Spear this fall, and Cooper's doing this. Right. And they retweeted it. Good job. An interesting move. No, well, it's a very aggressive move. Come on, man. Who are we kidding? Until there is some sort of kibosh put on all this, at some point there will be some sort of regulatory action, one would think. Uh, until that happens, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I, I, I get excited, but not as excited as others do when we sign, you know, a three-star linebacker. Good, good, great. Great. He could be five. Could be a five-star linebacker. A little bit more cash. A little bit more cash. And maybe that guy's maybe that guy's a five-star linebacker that you're signing. Just saying. Something to think about. Look, man, you can rest your head on the pillow of a three-star hotel. <laughs> but why would you want to do that when, when you there's can stay a five-star hotel right and here? And there's a room available. Yeah. Uh look at that thread count. Right. Right. And you reach a certain age in life where thread count means something to you. And so I think <laughs> I think I'm at that age. I'd like I'd like the thread count to be a little higher. Every time I read about one of these guys, I want to go, ooh, fancy. That's what we should be saying when yeah. we sign recruits. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> That's the new we win. We did it. Ooh, fancy. You nailed that three times. It's got staying power. It's the rule of three. Yeah. So that what you have to do now is just go ahead and pull that isolated. sounder. Yep. Pull that sounder, and let's be ready to go. Because well, let's be honest. You're looking at me. Who's going to actually pull it? I see him. He's right over director here. Director Matthew, pull that sucker. Let's go. That's right. Uh, pull the video version. Yeah. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to. I want to be able to say that every time. I want to be able to look at that name and go, well, look at there. Because to be honest with you, when you see like. DeMarco Ward, three-star linebacker, you go, hmm, there's no woo fancy to it. There's just you going, hmm, hmm, all right. Yeah, Larry David, okay. 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 No, I, 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 that wasn't meant. Like, DeMarco Ward, I don't know. He could be the next Marvin Jones. Who knows? I'm not trying to say anything disparaging about right. him. It's about the brand, and it's about pushing that brand and success. Yeah, that's what you're, you got to brag even when there is no room to brag. That's what you want us to do because that, that's what Miami's doing. They're bragging when there is no room to brag. What I'm saying is that when we get commitments like the one we got from that young man from Duluth, Georgia, to Marco Ward, I wish him nothing but the best. Hope like hell he's going to do great things for us. But, Tom, can we be a little bit honest here? I'm tired of seeing us win the recruiting battle over Arkansas State, Coastal Carolina, Duke, East Carolina, Eastern Michigan, Georgia, Southern Georgia State, Jacksonville State, James Madison. Well, you got to do something about it. You got to bring that fancy camera money to the party. I'm tired of seeing, oh, look at that. We beat out Western Kentucky, Troy, and South Florida. Mm, we did, did we? Great. Yes, we did. Yeah. You're damn right we did. Yeah. You know, we're... We're winning recruits that were recruited in a similar vein as me. That is not what we do. I couldn't have played here. I wasn't good enough. Just saying. We, we <laughs> Right, but, but you know what? If you were recruited here, you know what you'd say? Yes. Ooh, fancy. Ooh, fancy. No, instead, that's what I said every time I looked at Tommy Carter and William Floyd's recruiting letters, and they were letters, and I would read them, and I'd sit in the locker next to them and read those. But that's awesome, man. Look at the stationery it's on. It says Notre Dame. It says Florida State. It says, yeah, it was really cool. So did you get, like, the yellow Steno pad, the recycled paper? What'd you get? Uh, No. <laughs> what what letters did I get? Yeah. Did you actually get letters, yeah. or was it yeah, like yeah, a, hey, yeah, 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 if letters. you want to come here this Saturday, we're to, open house, no, fly yourself up. It wasn't like a hand little post-it note. It was a letter. It was an official offer. It was nice things like that, but they were to places like Western Carolina and in Eastern Carolina. And, <laughs> for a good time, call Coach O'Shaughnessy <laughs> Saturday. William and Mary, be there. Going to be in St. Pete this weekend, Jeff. This is Coach O'Shaughnessy. I'm going to be at Ferg's. 
you want to have a beer together, we can talk about your special teams role here at Troy. <laughs> Oh man, no, no, I the day that was awesome because and I tell the story all the time. Coach Stevens was my high school coach and he would hold out the letters when they'd come in, he'd yell out your name if you got a letter, you know. And so you'd go after practice, you'd come in the locker room and you know everybody would wait. You knew the time of year, right? And they'd yell out, you know, so and so and hammer in and whatever else, you know, and then and so obviously for William Floyd and Tommy Carter and Ladarian Allen and I played with a lot of really good players. And at the time you knew you were playing with good players, but you didn't know you were playing with guys that were like that kind of good. Meekless. <laughs> yes. uh, they, he would hold up stacks. He would hold up stack. Like you could barely contain them. He was holding up all the letters. Come get your letters. And then I'll be like, Cameron, there you go. Got one there from Memphis. There you go. All right. Thanks coach. And it was exciting, but but not quite the same as your boy sitting next to you with a Notre Dame letter, USC letter, yeah. Georgia, Florida, Alabama, you know, you name it. I'm like, oh, that's different. I told you I got recruited by Memphis illegally for 10 seconds on the practice green of districts. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even kidding. Oh, the this low old timer. dirty world of high school <laughs> golf recruiting <laughs> to Memphis. Yeah. I'm on the putting green and like I'm, <laughs> I'm the man who's riding the pine for this thing. You didn't uh, want any part of me. And uh, this guy walks up. He's like, "Hey, that's a good putting stroke." You know, I was like, "Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, whatever. Get yeah. out of the way. I'm. Yeah. You know, I might. Somebody might be sick. I might be playing today. That's what I'm thinking in my head." And he goes, "Well, if you're ever interested in the future playing golf at the next level," and he hands me a divot tool with a Memphis Tiger coin on it. I'm like, okay. And he walks away. Oh yeah, I would be like, "Oh, that's just fancy." <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I kept it for a long Ooh, time. Fancy. <laughs> Be a big deal. You should have kept it. That's you, pretty you see cool. What the director did with it. Yeah, I like it. I love it. We're going to use it from here on out. All right, I'll gather myself. I got something more to say. Jeff Cambridge, 93.3, Real Talk Radio, War Chan TV. You were always more than my mom. You were my role model, my best friend, and biggest supporter. You filled my days with unconditional love. And you also prepared for the day when you couldn't be here. Because of the woman you were back then, I'm able to be the woman I am now. Your planning made this moment possible. Set your family up for life. Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance. Your friends for life. This is Andy Cohen. When I was a law enforcement officer, I devoted my life to a career of service and protection. Who's protecting you? Give me a call. 850-671-FARM. That's 671-FARM. Helping you is what we do best. Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company, Jackson, Mississippi. Not licensed to do business in all 50 states. The weather is unpredictable and can cause issues around your home. Weston Trawick provides commercial, residential, and industrial electrical wiring services, yearly inspections on fire alarms, portable generator sales, and so much more. With 24-7 emergency service and repair, Weston Trawick will be your calm in the storm. Give them a call at 514-0003. Weston Trawick, professional electrical services day or night. Visit online at westontrawick.com. Hey, this is Dustin Rivas. During the pandemic, I noticed restaurants struggling with online ordering and watched as all the major third parties took advantage of our local restaurants and thought there must be a better way, which is why I created foodiestakeout.com. The unique thing about Foodies Takeout is that restaurants keep 100% of their order revenue versus splitting upwards of 30% with the third parties like Uber Eats and Bite Squad. At Foodies Takeout, you can find some of your favorite restaurants, such as Jerry's Midtown Cafe, Miss D's Kitchen in Frenchtown, Casa Grande, and even El Jalisco. Or if you're on the north side of town, check out Horizons Bar and Grill. Why not give us a try? Head to foodiestakeout.com or text foodies to 230-9456, and I'll even give you 10% off your first meal. Supporting local restaurants has never been easier. Visit foodiestakeout.com. If you're hearing this right now and you or someone you know is active military, a veteran, police officer, firefighter, nurse, or a teacher, turn up the volume and listen to this. My friends Shannon and Chad, also known as the legendary team at Hamilton Home Loan, have a hometown hero loan program designed to make a difference to those who make a difference. When it's time to buy a new home, these guys will waive all their lender fees for hometown heroes. That's a $1,600 value right there out the gate. If you decide to use their preferred title company for the closing, you'll be saving another 600 
That's $2,200 in discounts right off the top. That's like 20 tanks of gas in your car, everybody. Shannon and Chad are legendary for a reason. And today, more than ever, it's important to save as much money as you can wherever you can. So if you or someone you know is active military, veteran, police officer, firefighter, nurse, or a school teacher, and looking to buy a new home, choose the legendary team at Hamilton Home Loans and ask about their Hometown Heroes program. Call 844-FSU-LOAN or just visit FSUHomeLoans.com. Equal housing lender. NMLS number 200719. Hey, Tallahassee, it's Sarah with Seminole Auto Glass. You're probably driving right now, which means you're surrounded by glass. Did you know that each piece is made differently? Your windshield is two sheets of glass with a thin plastic in between. This allows it to take an impact without going all the way through. Side and back glasses are typically tempered. This strengthening process is what allows them to be shattered in the event of an emergency. Regardless of the glass or how it breaks, we can help. Trust your local auto glass experts. Seminole Auto Glass, proudly serving the Big Ben for over 15 years. Better call Seminole. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. This is this this conversation very quickly is going to be devoid of our differing opinions on live and more about the PR firm and why people need to stop being stupid. It's just not hard. Listen to me. Stop it, fellas. And and that includes most notably Brooks Kepka, who sounded like a freaking idiot yesterday. Again, stop doing this. Everybody knows the reason you went to live. You don't want to work hard. You don't want to compete against the best in the world. And you want the 200 million, the 100 million, the 50 million, the 20 million, whatever it is. That's it. That's all. That is the only reason you're going. Stop telling anybody that you're promoting the game of golf. You're not. That's dumb. Secondly, stop saying you're growing the game. No, you're not growing the game. It's not even on a TV. Stop it. You're not growing the game of golf. And then stop telling people things that you think will allow for you to deflect from the moment instead of answering the question honestly. Abraham Answer told the press yesterday when asked about why he left the PGA Tour and joined Liv, as opposed to for the money, he said, I wanted to spend more time with my family. He's neither married nor does he have kids. Get the hell off my dais. Get out of here with that nonsense. Shut up. You sound ridiculous. Every day, do they not have somebody? They've got two billion dollars to spend on sports washing. How do you not pull somebody aside and say, "Now, listen, you're going to get asked some hard questions. Let's have some answers that make sense." Problem is, it's hard to afford a good PR person when you spend a billion dollars on beheading devices. Well, perhaps, but I would think, but um, I would think that you could at some point just say, "Hey, look, guys, no secret here." Many of our players are getting beat up a little bit here in the press. They're going to ask you why you left the foremost preeminent tour with real cachet in history and came to our makeshift operation here. Now, we know and I know that the answer is for money. Got it. If you don't feel comfortable saying that, which, by the way, you could. But if you don't feel comfortable saying that, say something other than this nonsense. Right. Well, to which the the officials would say, you think that's beat up? Come with me to a bazaar one day. (laughs) I'll show you what beat up's about. Oh, man. Got a little handsy with the fruit, did you? I mean, it's Ooh. just, it's bizarre. I mean, that to watch, and then he said, like, Patrick Cantlay last week. Get the hell out of here with this answer. He's asked, uh, now, Patrick Cantlay, I don't know if he's going or not. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. But Patrick Cantlay is asked about it, and he seemed stunned that he was asked about Liv. Like, 
Where did this come from? What does this live of which you speak? I can't fathom why that question would be asked of me at this time. I mean, he, I, I'll go find the direct answer. It's it's one of those moments. It's like when you read a transcript of something Trump says, you're like, that's, that's not the, you're not even speaking English. So like, if you look at his answer, Non sequitur followed by non sequitur followed by non sequitur followed by no direct answer, no even partially close answer to the question. It's just, well, there's no, I have the handlers and things and, you know, golf, I'm trying and it's, you know, right now here in time and this is, uh, so no, I don't know. Mm. Oh. Okay. So, Patrick, the 13th is a drivable par four. Are you going to be laying up or going for it? <laughs> it was just to listen. Forgive me. I need more time. To, uh, I'm just so stunned. To oh. listen to it was stunning. Was stunning. It's just gibberish. No, I mean, just meandering about. What stuns me isn't the stupidity within the answer. It, it, in any walk of life. There are smart people, dumb people, and everybody in between. A whole lot of average. Got it. So if you take a large sampling of PGA Tour players, it would figure you're going to get some very thoughtful answers, interesting, insightful answers. You're going to get some incredibly stupid, vapid answers that make little to no sense, and a whole lot of somewhere in between. Like, uh, it was kind of a little lukewarm there, but okay. But man... Don't don't walk into a press conference at the time where this is the biggest story in your game and not expect the question. Like, wouldn't you take the time? I would. Well, expect he expected the question. He just thought that he would be wise somehow well, well, <laughs> by acting incredulous that he was asked it in the first place. He's like, that's the ticket. That's how I'm going to roll. Watch how I take over the room here with this answer. Oh, what do you mean? That's going to play. No, it's not, Patrick. No. no, watch this. All right, let me go out there. So you think it was arrogance? I, absolutely. This I is all know. arrogance. This is all arrogance. No, I think I, what I would say is, though, I mean, okay, look, you've had enough time. If you're if you're a player now considering it, you've watched because an event's already occurred. We're on to Portland. There's another event. You've, you've had ample opportunity to watch the way that guys have been questioned. Yeah. And you've seen the kinds of answers that Pat Perez was asked directly whether or not he had a problem taking money from the Saudis for the obvious reasons. Pat Perez said, no. Well, there you go. Right. That is the, the answer. Yeah, that is you it. Know, yeah. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. Guys, I am of Vegas. I don't know if you looked at my sponsorships. I, I'm of Vegas. And if you know where Vegas gets funded largely, then, you know. What? I, yeah, think about it. Think, right. oh, that answer couldn't be any better. Yeah. No. Now, he went on to expound to give him credit. He said, I've been on the road for 19 years. I missed my son's birth. I've had to do this. this, this. I want to play less golf and make more money. That's what, basically, he just said that. I went, yeah. Okay. I disagree with you, but that's fine. There's no follow up. You gave me the answer. Right. That's the answer to the question. What am I going to do? Get into an argument with you? You answered the question pretty directly, succinctly, thoroughly. We're done here. It doesn't matter what I think. I'm just asking the question. You gave me the answer. We're moving yeah. on here. When you stutter after your way through the answer and it makes no sense. Yeah, that's, again, that's arrogance. It's arrogant. I mean, like, look at Brooks's answer in oh, the his, U.S. Open. No, I'm talking about the U.S. Open. Which is insane. That answer, look, oh, my God. If you deliver it the right way, you're, you're detracting from the U.S. Open. If you deliver it the right way, that could play. It could oh. work. It could. But what the problem, the way he delivered it, and then the way he got uh, frazzled well, he when was, there was a follow-up question, we're talking hurt. about something that happened last week. When has there ever been another option? Well, that's the event that happened. Last, like So that, to me, is evidence of a close circle of confidants and advisors being an echo chamber and not being somebody who's strong enough to stand up to the and, person that they're representing or helping and saying, you sound like an effing idiot. So that's this what is I mean. not what we're going to say. But that's uh, what I'm telling you is it's arrogance. Well, if you're going to surround people who are only yes people to you, bros correct. on a group chat, they're correct. like, oh, that's a good one, bro. This is what you're going to get. Yeah, I get ego plays into that. And he thinks he always thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. And he seldom is. 
So that that is a problem. You do need somebody who is aware of that, that allows him to think it all he wants, because that's the confidence that he needs, I suppose. But at some point when the rubber meets the road, you do have to pull that person aside and say, okay, look, man, I let you play this game all the time with these other dumbasses. But you and I know you're dumb. Now, here's the deal. You're going to get asked real questions, hard questions, by people that are a hell of a lot smarter than you. And if you give that answer, you're done. You're going to look like a moron, which we both know you are. So now listen. And lay it out. It's right. just, it's such an easy way to avoid that, to deflect from that with a with a straight answer that does not allow for a follow-up. Yeah. Yes, and there's, you could have well, 10 no, answers prepared. Correct. That could not be followed up upon. Correct. And, and nobody chooses one of them. But none of them do. Except that, Pat Perez. Except for, yeah. Apparently Pat Perez. Yeah. That's the part I don't get. What are we doing, guys? <laughs> what are we doing? It's just, this, the Jeff Cameron Show PR firm is flustered by the amount of times we witness this happen right. day in and day out like now avoiding the overriding argument which you and i've had back and forth all the time i don't know if we have enough hours in the day to 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 attack each nuance of this but i would say that that part is simple and we both agree on that 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 part is very simple well, that, how they don't get that right is crazy what's interesting to me is yeah it I wonder if these guys are even smart enough to have taken my side on the argument or my points that I would make for if you're going to go down the live path. Like, does it even, does it even, do they even consider that that might be a reason to say, yeah, sure, why not? That a lot of the same dollars that we're questioning that the players take go elsewhere. I'm not, I'm not going to make that argument, but all of them, say for maybe a couple, when they appear on the dais, look guilty, look guilty. Well, they, they, they know there's some things they know to be true, and it's not even the blood money argument. They know that this is doing, at, at the current at the present time, major damage to the PGA Tour. They also know that they've lied repeatedly on the road to eventually changing their mind. So there's the guilt from the lies that they repeatedly told. There is the feeling that they all must feel, well, I don't know about all, but many must feel having publicly stated one thing and then betrayed the members of the PGA tour whom you lied to repeatedly right. over and over again. So there's now immediate, I, there's immediate guilt that stems from all yes. of the lies you've told prior to flipping. I wouldn't give a rats. You know what about line of Jay Monahan, but to my fellow players, right? If, if you give a damn about them at all, this then you've taken the wrong path. It, you know, you could at least try and say something like I didn't, I couldn't believe they came up to this price. I had a price. What are you? I'm I'm sorry. I'm a human well, being. I, I had a price, and this is it. If you and are, whether I'm getting 10 million from FedEx, uh, the championship of the playoff, right. or 150 million paid up front, well, you know, I got to take the 150. It's as simple as this. If, if you're somebody whose career is clearly on, you know, the the latter stages of its existence, right? You you're not going to be winning any PGA Tour <clears throat> tournaments anytime soon. Say you're Lee Westwood, okay. And you just want a golden parachute out of here. You're not playing a lot of golf these days. When you do play, you're not playing very well. You're missing cuts. You're having to travel all over Hell's Half Acres just to miss those cuts. And they offer you an ungodly sum for whatever reason. Uh, and you say, oh, okay, I, I don't know. Maybe I got to do this because I'm not going to win anything anytime soon. My dream of winning these majors is long gone. Okay. You know what? I'm going to do it. Then you should sit up there that when, when you've made that decision, it'd be so easy, instead of doing what they did, to go up to the people you do care about. I'm sure you're going to have, everybody's got friends on the tour, for the most part. Bryson DeChambeau didn't, but um, but but most people do. So you would eventually, you would you would probably pull those guys aside and say, I, I think I got to do this. I'm sorry, man. I got to do this. I'm doing it because it's... Right. You would go to the people you care about and right. let them know. Yeah. 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 But that's not what any... That seemed... I think that, that might have been what Dustin did with JT. Because JT, when he was listing some of the things, said, I'm not going to think any, you know, I'm disappointed, but I'm not, not going to interact with Dustin. Yeah, he might have pulled him aside and said, uh, he might have, yeah. It's interesting with Dustin. It's just a strange decision when you look at the annual income that he was making it's, it, and the successes. It is strange. He's won each of the last 24 years on tour. It's, it's, it's bizarre. Most of the guys have not been successful in competing with the best players in the world. They know that 
they're hard pressed. Just that's to, changing though. The names that are being added to the roster, I think, in the near future, is going to change that idea. Some, of, some of it, yeah. I mean, answer didn't appear to be on the verge of winning any majors. Uh, DeChambeau, I think that thumb injury is devastating to his career, and we're seeing that. Also, he was a pariah on the tour, so he was just like, "Well, screw it." I get that, but to say that this is a completely punchless tour at Live Golf, I, I don't think that's true either. You've got guys who could win majors right now that are on that. Tour. Well, Dustin is certainly one of them. Yeah. Um, Patrick Reed. I don't think so. Uh, Would it shock you if uh, Sergio was on the first page of the leaderboard at, at the Open at St. Andrews this year? Well, no. no in the Open, is interesting. Holter, because, no. It would. I mean, oh, no, no, he but, shows but, up, I mean, out of nowhere. Know, yeah, but he's not going to win. I mean, Ian No, Holder. but, I mean, look, capability is is part of the discussion here. You're looking for somebody who's capable to go toe-to-toe, not necessarily somebody who's going to be a six-time major winner over the next, you know, 10 years. No, but I'm, I'm pointing to a trend of player that looks to have little to no chance to ever actually secure one of there those There are plenty majors. of those. Yeah, that, that's the 99% of them. There are more of those. Well, yes, but there are more of those on the PGA Tour than the Live Tour. And if you're going by percentage. Because you have more players. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I would say that, you know, again, you're talking about the, if you're trying to, well, they're trying to make that viable. First of all, they got to play 72 holes if they're going to make that viable. Secondly, you got to get two away with the stupid shotgun starts and all that nonsense and do away with, oh, you know, we'll, they we'll, might next year. I think what this year is is a parade. And then next year, they're trying to, is it, yeah. I think they're expanding to 14 events next year. They're trying. Yeah. They're trying. Yeah. yeah. So it, it'll be, it'll be fascinating. Just my, I guess I'm still not watching it for the record. Well, you it's, can't. It's, just, it's hard yeah. find. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck for finding it. That's the part of the problem with Brooks's answer. Well, you know, we're growing the game. It's on TV, isn't it? He actually said that out loud. No, it's not, Brooks. It's not on That's TV. That's what I'm saying. He, Dumbass. He doesn't have a circle that says, hey, let's prepare for this. Or if they do, he's like, I got it. And you're like, no, you don't, you man. <laughs> you don't got it. You haven't had it in some time. It's Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. Your local news now. The Tallahassee Police Department announced Tuesday an arrest stemming from a June 11th incident. 18-year-old Dominic McBride was arrested. Multiple subjects engaged in a physical altercation inside the McDonald's located on South Monroe Street. When the altercation escalated, two individuals began shooting at each other. The incident went into the parking lot of the fast food restaurant. An unarmed victim of the physical altercation attempted to disengage. Then McBride fired at him. The victim was not injured, but the second shooter sustained serious injuries. The Madison County Sheriff's Office is warning citizens of a scam on Facebook promoting pop-up shop events at Four Freedoms Park. The fake advertisement says that there will be two events, one in July and one in August. It also advertised booth fees per weekend and welcome vendors. It was determined that the events are scams that originated from the country of South Africa. The Sheriff's Office stressed for individuals not to send money to anyone connected to the fake events. This is Rachel Lene with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Scattered thunderstorms likely this afternoon. Otherwise, more clouds and sun. Highs around 92. Winds out of the southeast around 5 miles per hour. Cloudy skies expected tonight. Chance for scattered thunderstorms. Lows dip down to about 73. Chance for scattered thunderstorms again tomorrow. Highs level off around 91. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 94. Wit & Glass has been taking care of families since 1945. Experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best. Like Witten's top-of-the-line bath enclosures. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Wit & Glass. And they provide precise installation. Wit & Glass, Tallahassee's first family in glass. Online at wittandglass.com. Call 850-222-5781. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Goodness. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. I'm Joel Clark, a select quote agent, with a true story that could save you hundreds of dollars a year. A woman named Linda just called. Her husband, Ray, has a group life insurance policy, but is changing jobs and he can't take it with him. Well, I went to work and found Ray, who's 40 and takes medication to control his high blood pressure, a 10-year, $500,000 policy for only $19 a month. 
That's way more coverage for a lot less than what he was paying. If SelectQuote didn't shop for your life insurance, you're probably paying too much. For your free quote and to find out how much you can save, call 1-800-597-2010. That's 1-800-597-2010. 1-800-597-2010. Or go to selectquote.com. Since 1985, we shop you save. Get full details on the example policies at selectquote.com slash commercials. Your premium could vary depending on your health, issuing company, and other factors. Not available in all states. Here's what you missed on the Greg Tish Show. We need to have history. We need to have literature. It deserves an explanation. We don't need to be promoting lifestyles that come into play for your average elementary school. Well, I had an experience with this. When my daughter was in school, her teacher gave her a book to read, but then she asked me what the C word is. That was in the book. That was in the book. Okay, talking so about the C word. So you're talking about conservatives, right? <laughs> <laughs> the Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show is sponsored by the legendary team at Hamilton Home Loans. Great rates, cutting-edge technology, and transparent communication is the recipe for a five-star mortgage experience at FSUHomeLoans.com. show spoon is a really good first show that's what i said yeah no i'm agreeing with oh you. Yeah, yeah what a cool like you know most of us our first show is we're really young and we see something absurd like i think i saw golly the first concert i ever went to hmm, that's a fun subject i think it was the stray cats and the go-go's played together oh there you go all right i think that's right these are i think i was 11 something like that I didn't go till I was in high school to a, a proper concert, like, you know, more than just live music at your local whatever festival. But it was Weezer in 2001 that I saw. I got lucky, man. I saw you two in 1984. Woo! Mm. I was 13 in the Sun Dome. 87, I saw him in Tampa Stadium. That they so. play the Sun Dome is, it speaks to how much they climbed you think? after yeah, that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Sun Dome. three years later, they were playing uh, Tampa yeah. Stadium. So, yep. yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I also, my brother took me to the Bayfront Center many moons ago, and I was a kid, and saw. I, I told this story. I saw Rush on the Moving Pictures Tour, and uh, there was, it was just a weed cloud that you could barely see through, and I didn't know what, I was, I was a kid. I really didn't know what any of that was, and I was like, what is going on with all the smoke? And my brother was laughing. Guys all I'm around. sure he was. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, everybody was like, look at Neil Pert. But, yeah, we were all just looking around like it was unbelievable. And uh, and I just kept going, what is, what is going on? Why would, what's with the incense? All this incense. My brother's like, that's not incense. I was in awe. You know, what's funny is the incense for a Catholic mass is uh, is what separates it along with other things. And it becomes, no pun intended here at all, just lucky, a high mass. That's that's what it's called. That's so if you called. got the incense going around, the extra flowy garbs, they mm. call it a high mass. We're really doing it. Yeah. Been getting after it there with the extra incense. Uh, so I will tell you, by week's end, when I put myself on the, uh, on the not the hot seat, but I, I mean, uh, our ass is in the jackpot now. No, I got to do uh -huh. a college sports book this week. I want to do one, um, and, I, and I've seen some numbers. The numbers, again, are starting to trickle out. It's almost July. Got to get these bets in, buddy. Got to get them in. I am more and more intrigued every day by the Utah-Florida game. And by the way, don't you love the negativity swirling around Florida right now? What a tough week for Billy Nate. So Peter. I didn't get that you put an open letter out to the people? I don't understand what that all well, is. Hey, it's a good situation when you lose out on some guys and then you can just say, this collective is not getting it done. Coaches can... <laughs> <laughs> is that what he's saying? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah, a little pissed at the at the collective, Tom. A little pissed at the collective. Now that's never going to work. Recruiting's recruiting, whether it was the previous mode of recruiting or not. You have to get players, and nobody wants to hear why you didn't. That's interesting. Norvell's too. going through that right now. Look, I understand in the state of Florida that an NIL collective is completely separate from the university. 
But I wonder if you did a little bit of digging, would there be any crossover? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's not at all, but would there be any crossover between high level boosters and an NIL collective for the university? If there isn't, then he's right to, you know yeah, what? He yeah, can rip right. the collective. That There's is. nobody that, that <laughs> shares a, a group text or anything like that. Otherwise, that might not be a really smart idea to piss off the money people. No. As your first act. What a cool moment. I'll give it to him for now because I've spent so much time making fun of him. But a couple days removed, just think about how excited, again, the fine folks at Texas are for Arch Manning's commitment and that verbal pledge we got this week and how excited he was. And you now you have the uh, you have the expectations once again for Texas to fly through and over. Uh, anything previous, I mean, you got to go back a ways, but obviously picking Texas over Georgia and Alabama, fine, good. Take it on down the road, Texas, Arch. That's good. That's fine. Yeah, it's an SEC pick for them. Right? By the time he plays, they're going to be in the SEC. Yeah, and I and I and I thought about that, and I thought about um, you know the high expectations yet again for that uh, program, and how many times those fans have been let down. But man, Sarkeesian's doing some things in recruiting right now. So well, yeah, he's got the number one quarterback in the previous cycle too. So it's uh, Quinn Ewers or Ewers, I don't know how to pronounce Let's get it. Get it on. But yeah, you've got yourself two high level, not necessarily in, in all re recruiting rankings, number one quarterbacks though, number one in, in some rankings, back to back cycles. Yeah, I mean, that that will set and ratchet up expectations in a huge way. It all starts with that position. So they put their money in the smart spot for the right position that will change things for a program. We'll see what happens. Sarkeesian has talked about how when he was at Southern Cal uh, as an assistant, you know, getting Matt Leinert. We're getting old, by the way, Tom, because I can remember when that happened. You can, too. I know you remember Matt Leinert's career, sure. but do you remember Matt Leinert, the recruit? Do you remember, like, no, the, the I big deal it was? No, the, I don't the first mean recruit in, yeah. I ever heard of, uh, because my buddies were into War Chant and uh, Blue Gold Illustrated, because you know, my other buddy was a Notre Dame. Oh, fan. I was going to say, what the hell? Um, and uh, it was Julio Jones was the first player oh, I ever heard of. Yeah. I was like, oh, we got to get Julio Jones to Tallahassee. Little did I know it would be the great Julio Jones, and he would not choose Tallahassee. Yeah, uh, came close, came close. We couldn't win the money battle there, and I remember Jimbo and I having a conversation about that. And oh, uh, really? Mm -hmm. A straight cash, homie, huh? Well, I don't, I don't you know, I'm get, not getting into those kinds of details, but I, I just remember. Oh, Jimbo opened the door. First of all, he doesn't lie and doesn't cheat. <laughs> Secondly, he said to find bomb, since he doesn't lie and he doesn't cheat, they had NIL, NIL deals before NIL. They just weren't, weren't called NIL deals. Right. Well, I don't, he wasn't necessarily saying that, you know, we lost out on the battle uh, because of money, but it is awfully difficult to out recruit Alabama for a player there of that stature. They were not going to be out recruited, Tom. Okay. All right. They were not going to be out recruited. We weren't quite in the game at that time. That's we despicable. We weren't we weren't there at that time. I I wanted to go back to something Ira and I argued about yesterday on some of the headlines because a few people asked me about it on Twitter and via email and the such. Uh I said that we were a ways away. What was it I said yesterday? Five to six years minimum away from competing for a college football oh, I playoff Y'all were yelling at each other for like a full minute. I was like, oh, man, this is getting testy. Well, he, he he took issue with my five to six years away, and and he said whatever he said, two to three or three to four. I'm like, we're basically. I like, asked Matthews, I was like, is this what happens every week on headlines? My God. My follow-up to Ira should have been, because he was bringing up recruiting and Jimbo got – "Quote unquote lucky to get Jameis uh, and and how it changed things." Yeah, well, he got a lot of other players too, man. He, in fact, had the number one, the number two, and number four recruiting classes in succession. One, two, and four. Oh yeah, that's my argument. Yeah, he would have no, been but, on the precipice without Jameis because that well, first we were on staff, the precipice without Jameis. One point oh, one point oh staff was cold blooded. No, man. but my point was one, two, and four almost ensured that you were going to have better players than everybody yeah, else. Well. Now, Jameis, of course, changed the game. But this particular group is not on the cusp of the number one, two, and four recruiting classes. It's not about to happen here. That's not – we're not close. So that's what it's going to take to become viable for the college football playoff in the very near future. Now, your, your counter could be what? Oh, after this year, you'll see they're going to have a top five recruiting class. Perhaps. Let's hope. Uh, my counter would be it's more likely that the college football playoff will announce expansion before well, we have a top right, five right, class. Right, and if right. that happens. My argument is for a four is the four team playoff. I'm yeah. not saying right. 
that yeah if they expend a 12 yeah we could get there jimbo could have won it all in his third year if it wasn't for spinny whippity do at nc state well that was also the way that was called jimbo decided to put the reins on all the calls well, in that game because he fancied himself alabama and wanted to run the ball down their throat and we couldn't because we're not even with those problems you're in a position where it's a one read or throw away situation oh no listen, EJ, no you're not gonna get whippity do you're right? putting me in the position to defend ej who i screamed about eternally uh with all that it brings do. me joy to put you in that uh, position uh, no 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 sir <laughs> no, no, no. And i was enraged for a very long time very frustrating you win one of those games, either NC State or Florida. Well, the Florida game probably more importantly. And you're playing Notre Dame for the national title in 12. My man T-Spark responded to my criticisms of uh, Hauser, by the way. Uh, they fixed the roof with the leakage up there. And that was him. He mm -hmm. sent out a picture of it. Oh, T-Spark, Travis, baby, we know you do good work. I'm not. I know that the uh, the roof at Hauser was fixed by T-Spark Enterprises Roofing and Construction, and they do great work for all that they service, of course, including It's just that they're going to have to do a lot of work. There's That's a, a big contract. More work to do. That's yeah. a big contract. A lot more work to do, by the way. And That's all I'm saying. Let's let's get to work. Let's get some, some other stuff done there. Maybe he could – I don't know what the stuff is called that allows you to fix the puddles down beneath that aren't caused by that roof there, but rather are there leakages. Leakages? Is that a word? Uh, you just need to drill holes in the floor, so it, you know, set other, it somewhere else. Got us some other leakages around here. Check out these leakages, Terry. Oh, my goodness. Leak? What? Look at them. Leakages. I haven't seen leakages like this since <laughs> I was at Notre Dame. Well, no, I was going to go somewhere clean. Oh, I thought you were going to go somewhere Notre Dame else. Stadium when I was in South Bend for my first five years. Now, we didn't get many people to come to our games, but, man, had they, they would have seen leakages the likes of which you've never seen before. It's uh, unbelievable. The football stadium. Yeah. You know, the dump. The dump, the, like the city. Yeah. Yes. We'll come back, give you those probables right on Big River. Physical stress in our bodies can take its toll as the years go by. Whether you're looking to get back into an old sport or just want to spend more time outdoors to explore all life has to offer in our beautiful city, the dedicated team at TOC is here for you every step of the way. You can trust TOC for all your orthopedic needs. And now, scheduling an appointment has never been easier. Just visit teamtoc.com and click schedule online. That's teamtoc.com. Let's be honest, we all have way too much stuff. Maybe your storage closet is full, your garage is full, or the guest bedroom is a mess. Call Southeast Portable Buildings, 580-6400, or visit them online at southeastportablebuildings.com. All right, about that time to upgrade my iPad and my Apple gear. How much memory do I what need? What upgrade should I get? What size screen is it? How many chargers do I need? USB-C, USB-D, mini USB, USB-B, ABC, one, two, three. If only there was a local business that can guide you and help you understand what you need and get you the best pricing possible. Oh, wait, that's what they do over at Mac and More Systems on Capital Circle. Get help buying the right gear for the right Right price and have it shipped directly to their store for pickup all at no extra cost that's the kind of service you won't get at any big box store shop local at macamore systems find out more online at macamoresystems.com hey no fans our partner isf inc is a national management and it consulting firm located right here in tallahassee florida solving the future for state governments through strategy process and technology as a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. Summertime is color time. This summer, why not spend your time off with the Home Improvement Project? You can use this time to try one of the most popular DIY projects, painting. And you can find your favorite color with one of America's most popular paints, Benjamin Moore. Shop for all the best paint colors and paint supplies at Epps Decorating Center with two convenient locations in town. Find out more online at EppsDecorating.com. Live and living color and totally free, subscribe to WarChant TV on YouTube, the digital home of WarChant.com. From the practice field to pregame and the phone calls afterwards, WarChant's YouTube channel is home to live programming like seminal headlines, 
Wake Up War Chant, The Jeff Cameron Show, as well as Trench Talk, a live Q&A with Knowles offensive lineman Devontae Love-Taylor. Just search War Chant on YouTube and click or tap the subscribe button. That's it. It's totally free. War Chant TV on YouTube. Just another reason we're the ultimate seminal sports source. The Jeff Cameron Show is sponsored by the legendary team at Hamilton Home Loans. Great rates, cutting-edge technology, and transparent communication is the recipe for a five-star mortgage experience at fsuhomeloans.com. these guys it's time for with the pitching uh, probably that intro was dying to get in there wasn't it it was antsy like Mikolas. it's eric lauer today and jalen beaks pirates nets that game is four to three buckos in the fifth we'll find a way to choke it away mitch keller payao Espino. I believe uh, his nickname is not just Screw and Mitch Keller. There it is. He's actually been better as of late. Still not what he was cracked up to be. A's, Yanks, Cole, Irvin, Jamison Tyon, who's really good. I can't begrudge him. He overcame cancer, but I want to. Astros match, Justin Verlander, Tawan Walker, your boy. That's the matchup you're going to get. Oh, I guess they pushed him up. Great. All right. Rangers Royals, Dane Dunning, Zach Greinke. Padres D-backs, Mike Clevenger and Madison Bumgarner. Tigers Giants, Ronnie Garcia, Alex Wood. Orioles Mariners, Austin Voth, Chris Flexen. Hey, you know, you don't hear a lot of people say, go ask Ronnie. Ronnie knows. You don't hear a lot of Ronnie anymore, do you? No, wasn't that in a catchy 80s song? Wasn't Ronnie a name of somebody? I don't think so. No. Ronald Reagan was Ronnie. Maybe that's what you're thinking of. Uh, Braves, Phillies, Kyle Wright, Ranger Suarez. Red Sox, Blue Jays, Nick Pavetta, Alec Manoa. But Ronnie would know things, is what I'm saying. You know, like, why is this pipe still leaking? I asked Ronnie. Twins, Guardians, Dylan Bundy, Cal Quantrill. Marlins, Cardinals, Sandy Alcantara, Andre Ponte. Reds, Cubs, Hunter Green, Justin Steele. That's like two superheroes. Hunter and Steele. Be a name of a bad sitcom. Yes, it would. Starring, <laughs> starring who? Yeah. Oh, well. It's a lot of names for that, but Hunter and Steel could be funny, too. Uh, Jeff Foxworthy and Cedric the Entertainer. <laughs> Dodgers, Rockies, Julio Urias, and Herman Marquez. White Sox, Angels, Michael Michael Kopech, and Shohei Atani. And that is a look at those that shall reside on the bump. I can't wait. We're getting close. Soon we'll have wagers again. I don't. Right now, it's that sort of uh, baseball's changed so much. You can't bet on it the way that you used to. You can, but it it's not as easy uh, because starters don't stay in games, and managers will start. Obviously, you get these guys that you know they'll start a reliever for an inning, bringing in somebody. You know, it's it's hard to make bets when that's the case, man. It's hard to know what to do there. You can just take. The, you know, comfort in the overwhelming knowledge for the most part that the Pirates are easy to bet against. But for example, if you did today, you took Washington minus 140 on the money line to win. Well, you're losing four to three right now. Buckos were plus 152. So I believe sports app gambling is legal in the state of New York, which is going to be mm, fun. Time to get it on, right? Yes. Do you think they take minor league bets? Because I'll be going to a Brooklyn Cyclones game on Saturday. You just want to juice fight? Yeah. They're playing the Jersey Shaw, uh, Shore Blue Claws. Hmm. By the way, Patrick Rogers at 35-1 to 1 for an outright top 20 is a good pick today if you're looking for a little something-something. 
Uh, I like that. I don't mind uh, some outrageous odds for some guys that have a chance to win that tournament. JT Poston is playing well right now at 55 to 1. Might be a guy to look at. So our friend Rob from Metro Deli nailed it. It's take me home tonight, Eddie Money, just like Ronnie said. There it is. Yes, thank there you. It That's is. exactly what I was yeah. thinking about. Thank you, Rob. Okay. I apologize. Yeah. No, but I thought I thought you were talking about just like Ron No, no, it's a great song. It's, it's Take Me Home Tonight. It's one of my favorites. I remember, uh, you know, Matt Moore and I did this bit for years and years and years. Those are seconds left in the show. That's me saying goodbye. Good work, fellas. Be good, everybody. Talk to you tomorrow. Mm-hmm.